Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and we're here with week three of our Vogue 8772 Sew Along. We are making our way uh, through our silk blouse, tie, pussy bow blouse, however you want to, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> and uh, today we're actually going to be tackling the sleeves and getting those put in with French seams. We did French seams, yes, or last week and we'll be continuing those throughout this entire blouse. Um, putting the sleeves in, putting the cuffs in. I did alter this sleeve. As a reminder, I will pop a link up here to the video where I um, actually altered that sleeve pattern that was in the One Pattern Three Ways uh, series. So I will pop that up if you're interested in that. Also, um, I'm using the continuous lap placket that is included with this pattern. Um, I really like that for the more delicate fabrics like the silk that I'm using for this one. However, if you are using something that is cotton and want to do a tower placket, if that's kind of more your speed, I will pop a link up to this video here. It's a very easy um, switcheroo to do, <laughs> to put it in the tower placket as opposed to the continuous lap placket. Um, and I my first shirt that I made with this pattern, I actually just swapped out a different uh, tower placket piece um, for the placket on the sleeve on that. And then we'll be attaching our cuffs and that will be it for today. Um, next week we'll be finishing up our shirt and I'm gonna be showing you how I make my bias tape um, that I'm using for the hem of this one. All right, guys, as always, if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you are interested in Able, I do have a virtual tip jar. I have a coffee account that has a, I have a link down to that below. Um, all the proceeds from that do go straight back into the channel for um, uh, equipment and supplies and all that kind of stuff for, mostly for the tutorials and sew-alongs. So that's all I have for today. I hope you have having a wonderful weekend, and I will see you again next time. Bye. Okay, so when I left you last week, sorry for the crinkling in the background, I've got some patterns paper here. Um, you, we have attached the collar to the shirt and then you should have slip stitched that shut. So we've got, you know, it stops here at that um, button band on both sides, both sides. Okay, so we're gonna put this aside for now. We're not gonna actually touch this again until the end of today. Um, we're going to work on the sleeves now. So we're working on steps 24 through 42, actually. And I'm doing things a little out of order because we've not done up our side seams yet. So I'm going to do that in one fell swoop with the side seams of our sleeve. So for today, it's basically the remaining pattern pieces, um, except for the bias tape for the hem. But we need our continuous, um, lap plackets, which are these two, um, rectangles. We need our two sleeve pieces. Now this will be different from the pattern um, because I'm not using a pleat. Uh, I am, you know, we made our own sleeve pattern here, so that'll be different a little bit from the pattern. Um, I mean, we're different from the pattern anyway, but you know what I mean. And then our two cuff pieces that are both interfaced. So we're going to put those aside, the cuff pieces aside for right now because uh, we don't need those quite yet. So put those aside, but we will be messing with those later in today's lesson. Okay, so what this is what we're gonna do. We are going to first put in our continuous lap placket uh, here at the bottom of the sleeve, and then we will put in gathering stitches. And then we're going to put our sleeves into our shirts with French seams. Then we'll sew up the side seam and the underarm seam in one fell swoop. And then we will attach our cuffs, and that will be today. And we'll be tackling the buttons, um, how I make my bias tape and attaching the bias tape um, to the hem, to do the hem uh, next week. And then we'll be finished with our shirts. Very exciting. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so with our sleeve pieces, we have this, oh, it looks like a dart, really. Um, what we're gonna do, this needs to be marked on your pattern, um, or on your actual sleeve pieces. And I usually, I'm gonna have to probably go back in and hit this with a, yeah, my chalk just did not wanna show up. So I'm gonna have to go back in and hit that. Um, but I like to trim, or sorry, be in frame. I like to, to uh, cut the both sides, which are a quarter of an inch away from the center slash point. And then I mark my top little dot. And then you can, if you want though, draw in your lines. 
um, with like a friction pen that'll go away with heat. And then we're gonna do a very small stitch length, like a 1.5, and we're gonna sew up to the point and back down to the edge of the sleeve. So I'll obviously just be showing all the steps on just one sleeve because it's the same for both and you don't need to see me do both. Um, plus I can sew much quicker off camera. So <laughs> that will get us through this. Um, so I'm actually gonna go off camera really quick just to mark my, this didn't get marked very well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark and I'm gonna draw in this triangle and then I will meet you back here and we will we will sew the triangle um, with a really um, short stitch length. Okay, so I have gone and marked my triangle a little bit better with my chalk. All right, so I have my machine, put that on the ground, set at a 1.5 stitch length. And I am, um, just gonna tilt that down a wee bit more so you can see. Woo, sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna sew um, the small little stitch length right along this uh, chalk line that I've drawn. Okay. Now, the reason that we did a really small um, line here is because we're actually going to now cut into this. So we're gonna cut right through the center in between that stitching line up right to that point. Um, and we want that to just stay nice and um, tight and we don't want anything to unravel. So once we have done that, we need our, one of our pieces of um, continuous lap bias. All right, I've put my machine back at a 2.5. So now, this is the wrong side of my sleeve facing up. But I wanna sew, I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna sew this to the wrong side first. Okay, so now the right side of my sleeve is facing up. So we're going to um, basically put this underneath here and we're gonna line up our raw edges and uh, here at the bottom and sew at a quarter of an inch. We're basically following the line that we just sewed. Now you're gonna be keeping the, it gets weird up here. So you're gonna be keeping the, um, the seam allowance at a quarter of an inch here on this um, continuous lap piece. But when you get up to this point, you'll notice that it's pulled away quite a bit just for everything to lie in a nice flat line, and that's okay. Um, you just wanna follow that line that you stitched. So you're just barely catching this piece onto this when you get to this point here, but that's what we want. So we'll be matched raw edges together and this is the right side of the continuous lap against the wrong side of the shirt. And again, I am at um, a 2.5 stitch length now. So now I'm just gonna follow along here. And when we get close, um, hopefully, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. And I don't think, can I get, oh, look at that. We can get much closer. So once we get here, you see that the raw edge here is pulled away quite a bit from the raw edge of the continuous lap placket, and that's what you want to see. So we're keeping the seam allowance at a quarter of an inch on the placket piece. You just wanna make sure you're not getting any tucks in there. Okay, so there we have it sewn, and there's at that point there. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the ironing board, and we're gonna press the seam allowance towards 
that placket piece. Okay. Um, and we're also going to, so this is the right side of the sleeve that is up right here. We're also going to take and fold a quarter of an inch on this flat side over and press that really well too. And then I'll meet you right back here. Okay, I'm staying zoomed in so you guys can see, hopefully, because this fabric's so busy. All right, so I've pressed the seam allowances towards the placket, um, and this is also the right side of the sleeve is up. And I've pressed um, one side of the placket over a quarter of an inch. So now we are just gonna take this placket and wrap it till it meets that stitching line. That's why I like to sew it onto the wrong side first, because then you can top stitch it on the front and it catches everything and it looks nice from the side you can see. So now we're just gonna fold it over till it meets the, meets the stitching line and sew just right to the um, right of that fold line. And you'll notice there's like a little extra here. We'll just cut that off. <laughs> I think that they make those a little longer just so you have some wiggle room. Because it would be bad if it were too short. All right, so there we go. So now um, that cut edge is completely encased in that placket. And, you know, the, it's okay if the, your stitching is not beautiful. See, it's not even there, but that's the wrong side. So we don't care. <laughs> And you also want to make sure you don't have any pinches. I mean, it will be bubbly in through there. That's okay. But we just don't want any pinches. All right. Again, this is the right-hand side of the sleeve here. So now we are going to fold our placket right sides together, basically. And here's where you have to think about how you want... Okay, so... Um, Okay, so this is the right-hand side of our shirt, and you'll see your placket will want to kind of fold in on itself. It kind of wants to do what we're getting ready to do, but we're just gonna take our placket and, um, again, right sides together, and then, again, this is the right-hand side. We're just gonna come back here to the back side, and we are going to stitch a line, a diagonal line, right here at this fold diagonally to the edge of the placket. This is just gonna help it um, lie nice and flat and kind of tuck the way we want it to tuck. So, again, you just wanna make sure you don't have any tucks or pleats in there just to keep everything looking nice. Silk presses really well, but sometimes it can get underneath like accidentally get underneath an iron when you're trying to do something else and sometimes the creases can kind of be hard to get out. All right, so I'm just gonna start right there. And no particular angle is necessary. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but yeah, just do a, a diagonal line there. So then when we flip our sleeve right sides together, we want the placket to lay nice and flat over on itself like that. And let me think this through. You want it going towards the back. Where's the back of the sleeve? I think this is the back of the sleeve. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so this is the back of the sleeve. This is the back of the sleeve here. So you want it going, folding towards. So your overlap is the front of the slide, sleeve side and your underlap is the back of the sleeve side. Okay, so now you can just go, um, so basically the, the placket kind of goes, curls inside now and it's just gonna lay right on top of that and you're just gonna give that a really good press. So just go and do that to um, 
this one and then do the same thing to the other sleeve and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so um, I've got our shirt here. I've already put one sleeve in and now we're going to put the other sleeve in. So now both sleeves have their little um, continuous lap placket. I've got some threads I need to trim. We'll do that in a minute. <laughs> okay, so now what we're gonna do is um, prep our sleeve so that when it goes into, when we put the into the cuff, it's easier to gather. So let's move that part of the shirt for a second. All right, so we have two parts. We have this, the bigger part here that this is the front of the, excuse me, front of the sleeve, and then the smaller part here, back of the sleeve. We're gonna do two separate gathering um, passes, and we wanna leave it out of the seam allowance because um, this sleeve will get sewn together before we actually pull our gathering stitches and put the cuff in. So what I'm gonna do is just do a gathering stitch. I wanna stay well out of that seam allowance. And I'm gonna sew like a quarter of an inch away. Then I get up here close to the placket. I don't want to, it, this is the side that's tucked under. I don't want to sew on it. So I'm going to go up and I do a box. So one stitch up. Then we turn and come back the way we came. All right. And then we're going to do the same over here on the smaller side. Stay out of that seam allowance. Okay, so now that'll be all ready when it's time to put the um, placket in later. All right, so now go back to your 2.5 stitch. Turn my back stitch back on. Uh, grab my shirt that I threw on the floor. <laughs> okay, so let me show you where we're going before um, we sew this one in. Okay, so I've got one sleeve already set in right here. So here is, here, let me, am I out? Yeah, I'm out as far as I can go. Okay. So here is um, my sleeve, where's my shoulder? There's my shoulder, oh, good gracious. Ties get in the way. So here's my shoulder right here out of frame. And then my sleeve is set in, but I have got the, um, the side seam and the underarm of the uh, sleeve are still open because we've not set those in yet. So it just gets set in really nicely. So there's that side and then here is the wrong side. So it's just this beautiful encased um, French seam there. Just looks really nice. It's just a really nice finish. Now, I really don't like doing French seams on sleeves, but it does do a really nice finish. And you just have to go slow because easing in the sleeve cap ease is um, can be tricky. Now this pattern does have quite a bit of ease in the sleeve cap. I probably should have taken a little bit out. Not a lot. It's not like over, like way, you know, a lot, which I think... Um, the Butterick shirt dress I did, I had to take ease out of that sleeve cap because it was a lot. But um, this one is easable. <laughs> but I remember I had to unpick it a couple of times when I did my denim shirt, which was a little bit more tightly woven than this. Um, but anyway, just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so what I want to do is we're going to do the same thing that we did for the shoulder seam. We're going to sew wrong sides together first. So this is the right side of my arm side. Just going to flip it over. These ties are getting heavy, and um, let's go this way with it. When they fall off the table, it pulls everything off the table. All right, so here's my shoulder seam here. This is obviously the wrong side facing up. So now I want to take my sleeve, and it's wrong sides together. So my sleeve is facing right sides up and you can tell because there's my beautiful placket that's all done. This is the right hand side of the sleeve. And then we're just gonna go and match our notches. So I'm gonna match wrong sides together, my top notch here. And then I'm gonna match my front of the sleeve notch.
and then just the end of it here. Now you could definitely, um, because there is quite a bit of ease in the, in the cap of the sleeve, you could go ahead and do some ease, ease stitches if you'd like. Um, I just, I don't know, I like to live on the edge <laughs> and try and see if my feed dogs can ease it all in. Not always successfully, so I do have to unpick on occasion. So there's the back of the sleeve, and then we'll pin here. All right, so I'm going to sew this with the um, sleeve against the feed dogs. So I'm gonna flip it over again. And remember, this is um, wrong sides together. So this first pass, we are going to sew it at 3 eighths of an inch. Remember our, um, our seam allowance is 5 eighths of an inch, but because we're doing French seams. Three eighths, of the in, three eighths of an inch is the same as uh, one centimeter too, just for reference. All right, I'm also gonna stick my hand, you see my left hand is going in between my shirt and my sleeve. So I'm just gonna work at pulling the, um, the ease of the sleeve cap back in as I sew. So we're fine here. Oops. Sometimes we like to accidentally, hold on, let me rethread my machine. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. <laughs> so we're pretty much one-to-one -one here at the underarm. So there's not really any easing that needs to happen here. But once we get to that notch, that's where I need to go in between my layers. And again, there is quite a bit of ease. So now, again, my fingers are in between that sleeve piece and the um, pattern. I'm gonna move that. Sometimes your pins, if you leave them in when you're sewing, um, ease in can accidentally cause pleats or tucks. Hopefully you can see that okay. Sometimes the shirt likes to kind of come up over it. I just want to really make sure. Made it to the shoulder point. It's always a big thing. Okay, go back in between. And sometimes because the shoulder point, sometimes you have to kind of lift your it's because it's kind of the the point where you go up and over so go make sure everything looks good and it does so now um, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the um, side seam I'm actually gonna do this off camera just because I don't want to be doing this through a viewfinder <laughs> because it can be tricky cutting because you are cutting you know ease like things are, are but the sewing the seam allowance bubbles there which is what it what it's supposed to do but um, we're gonna trim this to uh, three or about an eighth of an inch, and then um, and then we are once we have done that, then we are going to turn it right sides together, like so, and just very carefully. And I do this around a ham; I find it much easier. We're just gonna press. You can't press this open just because of you know, the, with the sleeveys and stuff. And this will actually turn much better once it's been trimmed, the seam allowance has been trimmed. But just turn it over and give it a good press. And we want that seam line right at the top there, all the way around. 
okay? And then I will meet you back here and um, we'll do the second pass with the machine. All right, so everything has been trimmed. As you can see a very small little seam allowance. And then I've put it um, right sides together and given it a good press, which is much easier on the other, under, excuse me, underarm where it is, um, there's not as much ease, but obviously actually where you get up here to the sleeve cap, when, when you press it like this, it actually makes it a little easier to sew and you don't have the, uh, quite the risk of um, getting pleats and stuff in there. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, now that it's been pressed and just take your time on that, um, it can get annoying, you know, trying to keep that, seam right on top but just go slow all right so now we're gonna go through and i have again put the sleeve against the feed dogs it's on the bottom and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance and just go slowly Your big thing here is you don't want to catch any excess fabric underneath. And accidentally create a pinch. Right. I mean, and you'll have some, you know, bubbling and waving there in that seam because of that ease, and that's okay. So then when you've turned it right side out, you've got a beautiful sleeve. Oh, and sometimes, look, you can kind of see, can you kind of see? You'll get those little hairs every once in a while. You just want to trim those close. But yeah. I'm very pleased with how that sleeve went in, as with the other one. And I think that's the only like little stray um, piece of fabric that I see. So that's good too. <laughs> All right, now it's gonna be time to do our side seams. So we are now going to, so everything is still in flat. We're not gonna touch our basting stitches at all yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this wrong sides together and push your seam allowances um, towards your sleeve. But we're just gonna pin that all the way down from the hem of the shirt, from the hem of the shirt, all the way to the, well, it's not the hem of the sleeve, but it's where we're gonna be, the underarm of the sleeve, where we'll connect the cuff. So I guess kind of the hem. <laughs> anyway, um, same thing. We are going to sew this wrong sides together at uh, three eighths of an inch, trim it, press it open, put it right sides together, and then sew that um, at a quarter of an inch. I always like to start at the uh, hem of the shirt. And actually, I think I am gonna put a pin just right here at the underarm. Mostly because my ties are really having a good time pulling this, the whole project off my table here. <laughs> Little stinkers. Telling you though, the spray starch really does make a difference. You also want to make sure when you get to it that you are um, getting your dart bulk captured.
Okay. All right, so I've sewn that now at 3 8 So now I will go trim my seam, press it open, and then press it right sides together, and I'll meet you back here to do the last pass. All right, so um, I've already done one side. Um, so we've, let me just hold on. <laughs> um, that one's that one. Okay, so I've got both sides ready. Well, one's already sewn. So over here, I tell you, Possibly putting in the ties later in the process, like after the sleeves are done, might help alleviate some of this, the ties flying everywhere. Okay, so um, here is the base of the sleeve here. So there is our um, wrong sides together, trimmed it, and then I have pressed it right sides together and kept the seam there um, on the top as much as possible. And now we are going to sew it at a quarter of an inch. I will say um, silk press as well anyway, but um, putting the starch in here, it's like sewing with cotton. <laughs> Makes it so nice. Also, you know, my darts on the underneath on this pass. I just want to make sure that that all lays flat when it doesn't, nothing gets, you know, turned up on itself. Okay. So now that seam is done. So now I'm gonna go back to the ironing board and I'm gonna press these seams towards the back and then I'll meet you back here to install our cuffs and then we'll be done for today. Okay, so we've got our shirt all put together. It kind of looks like a shirt. <laughs> um, so now we're gonna put our cuffs onto the bottom and I've already put it on one side. If I can find it, there it is. Um, so yeah, so we just have a very gathered cuff or sleeve into the cuff. Obviously there's not a button on there yet. Ooh, so sorry. Okay. So what we're going to need for this one in order to do this is, um, our cuff piece and it is a rectangle. So we're going to be attaching, um, this to the sleeve here at the, one of the long ends. It's going to get folded on itself to make the final cuff. Okay, so we're gonna find our sleeve, which is right here. Uh, first though, I like to put my cuff onto my sleeve um, on the wrong side first, so then I'm top stitching on the right side when I am fastening the other side of the cuff down. It's just my preference. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> I know a lot of times patterns will tell you to do it um, right side and then, you know, and you could, you could put it on the right side and then slip stitch it. If, you know, if you didn't want to have any top stitching, you could slip stitch it um, closed and that's fine. And speaking of that, um, let's see, we are now on to, where's the cuff on here? Yeah, we're on like edges 32 or uh, steps, excuse me, 32 to 36 because the pattern has you completely assembling the sleeve before um, um, attaching it to the body of the shirt, which we did not do. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is obviously wrong side out. You can see that's where we did that little um, top stitch. So what I'm gonna do is um, pin this to the uh, wrong side. So it's the right side of the cuff to the wrong side of the uh, sleeve and I'm gonna start about five eighths of an inch in and I'm gonna put a pin right there and then I'm gonna take it all the way around obviously there's a ton of sleeve that's gonna get gathered now remember on one of the sides and for me it's this side um, your little placket is turned back on itself so then I'm gonna come all the way around here and again, about five eighths of an inch in. Not about, it should be five eighths of an inch. <laughs> and put a pin in. 
All right, now we have a whole bunch of sleeve in there that needs to get um, gathered. So you're just gonna find your little gathering stitches. Hopefully you didn't accidentally get one into the seam. And I like to gather it way in. Now remember we have two different sections because we um, put gathering stitches in on either side of that seam. But I like to really gather the bottom of my sleeve and then I think it's easier to then disperse the gathers um, for it to fit. You know, if I gather it in too much, it's easier to then kind of disperse the gathers. And then I'm going to do the same over here. All right, now, now we've gathered it in like way too much. Oh, sorry, <laughs> stay in frame. See, we've gathered it in way too much, but I think that that's easier to um, then kind of disperse, make your gathers a little more even. So now we're just gonna go around the sleeve. Gathering is my um, very least favorite sewing thing to do. However, I love the way, I mean, most of the time, the application, like it's needed. Like I really love the way that it looks um, when it's done. You know, all those gathered tier dresses. Um, I do really like the way that looks. So it's a necessary evil. <laughs> okay. That looks pretty good. It's easy to, to, as you're kind of sewing, to adjust things. Okay. Now we are going to stick it under the um, searing machine. And I'm going to sew most of the time, because this is an interfaced cuff that we're sewing this to, you would want the cuff on top. But I like to have my gathers on top because then you can easily see, you can make them lie flatter. So I prefer to have my gathers on top. But as in most things, just do whatever makes sense for you. Once that is sewn, um, I like to just take my seam ripper, and if you just will rip, sometimes where you did the uh, one stitch over, especially in the silk, you can just pull those gathering stitches right out. Now you want to make sure you're finished with your gathering stitches, because there is nothing worse than pulling out gathering stitches and then realizing you need them back in. Okay, so yeah, I like to go ahead and pull those gathering stitches out now. Make sure I've got them all. I think we're good. Okay, all right, so now we have this piece, this cuff. So if we pull here, Oop. if we pull this up, this is still the wrong side of the garment up. So now the idea is to get this obviously down and we need to close up our sides. 
Now I like to do um, the burrito method. So um, I'm gonna go really slow and show you how to do this. So we've just sewn this like this. What you're gonna do is take the other end and right sides together, put them together like so. And just make sure, we're gonna sew from this side I think, that the um, shirt is tucked up in there. But you also wanna make sure you don't accidentally sew on it. So what you wanna do is now, and you can feel the shirt under there. We're gonna sew on the line um, that we just sewed on, not very much, like maybe three quarters of an inch in. We're gonna sew to the end and then sew up. And you really wanna make sure that that shirt is going up into there. Okay. Oops. Okay, hold on, my, I unthreaded. Okay. <laughs> All right, we got everything tucked in. Let's try this again, take two. Okay. All right, and then, sorry, I've got a very long tail. There. Then you just wanna kind of pull it out and make sure before we clip anything that um, you didn't get anything sewn that you didn't wanna sew. And that looks pretty good, so. Now, come back, clip our corner, trim our seam allowance down, and then our corner, just like so. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So here we have it, once again, where we've sewn So we're gonna take our cuff, and we're gonna fold it, we're gonna, we want to tuck this inside the cuff, this part of the shirt, which is why it's called the burrito. We want the stuffing in there. Just like so. And then this side, we'll do from the top down. And now, just wanna make sure that lies. I'm not feeling as confident about this side, folks. <laughs> okay, we don't have to go far. Just a few, just a wee bit into the shirt. And then pull it out and make sure that everything, and that's supposed to be back on itself, just like it, you know, when we pressed it, and that looks good. Okay. So I'll poke it back out. Always check before you trim. Nothing worse than trimming your corners and realizing you had something pinched in there, and you got to go back and redo it. Okay. So now. We're gonna pull everything right side out. And what's nice is usually you can just take that placket piece and kind of give it a yank and it really will pull everything, yeah, everything out there at the bottom. That looks good. And that looks good as well. All right. So this is still inside out. This is the right side of the shirt that's down in here and we're gonna leave it that way. So now I'm gonna go to the ironing board and I'm going to press this seam allowance up 
And then I'm going to take some pens and lay, um, you know, fold under my 5 8 of an inch and lay it over that stitching line and get it all pinned in place. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to press the seam allowance up into the cuff and then fold over 5 8 of an inch and pin it over that stitching line. And I'll meet you right back here. Okay, our last step for today. Okay, so I've got everything pinned. It's still on the inside because I want this on the top. So this is the right side. My shirt is wrong side out. Um, this is the wrong side of the shirt. So this is, I'm gonna be top stitching on the right side of the cuff. So now, um, there's a few options. You could just slip stitch this closed if you wanted to for an invisible finish. I just like a top stitched cuff. I just find that it sits a little flatter and um, it's not as floppy. So when I wanna like roll up my sleeves, I can easily do it. I don't know. Again, to each their own, um, it's kind of up to you. So now I'm just gonna sew not over my pins, that could cause some pinches. Um, about, you know, right, just edge stitch, right along the edge here where I've pinned. And I wanna make sure, when I did the other sleeve, some of my gathers got up in there. Had to unpick a little bit. Okay, excuse the background noise, everyone's home tonight. My <laughs> sweet husband just went and got pizza for dinner, so sorry about that. Um, so there we go, there's our cuff, all nice and top stitched. I top stitch all the way around it just because that is my preference. So now um, we are just, all we have left to do are the buttonholes on both the cuffs and the front of the shirt, um, and then the hem. So uh, next week I'm gonna show you how I make bias tape. Uh, I'm gonna make a single folded, sorry, I'm trying to turn this right side out here a single folded bias tape to do the hem, um, which is a little bit different um, on how I did the bias, you know, with the ties and stuff, or even other bias tape where I folded it in half, which is another way you can do it. So this is just a little bit of a different way. Um, so I'll be using my little bias tape maker tool to do that. Okay, I think we're all right side out now. So there you have it. I will see you guys next week to finish up our blouse. It's almost done.